good morning and welcome to the virtual worship service of the Unitarian Universalist Meeting House of Provincetown, where we affirm the inherent worth and dignity of every person and where we support each other on our spiritual search for truth and meaning. My name is Reverend Kate Wilkinson. I use she, her pronouns. If you don't know what a pronoun is, don't worry, I'm going to explain it a little later in today's service, which I'm calling deconstructing gender. I wanted to design this worship service because I've noticed that there are some evolving understandings about gender these days, like that a person doesn't have to identify only as male or female. I've noticed that people are starting to introduce themselves using their pronouns, and that there are some new to me words and symbols out there that I didn't know the meanings of. So over the last few years, I have been trying to educate myself by reading books, by asking trusted friends, by looking things up, and by questioning some really deeply rooted assumptions that I have had about gender. So I've been on a bit of a journey toward deconstructing gender and today I want to invite you along because maybe you are a bit like I was and have some questions on the subject. Today's service might answer some of them or spark some new ones. But first, as I light our chalice here in the sanctuary at the meeting house, I invite you to light a candle wherever you are. In that way, we can feel connected, even while we are apart. We light this chalice to remind ourselves to treat all people kindly because they are all our siblings, to take good care of the earth because it is our home, to live life full of goodness and love because that is how we will all become the best people we can be.
prayer for Trans Day of Visibility. Blessed are the trailblazers who brought us this far and are still trailblazing, still celebrating. Blessed are the drag queens and kings who remind us to not take life too seriously. Blessed are the gender benders, non-binary, gender fluid, and third gender folk, those who challenge us to reframe our gender paradigms. Blessed are the young ones who present fearlessly from the start. Blessed are their parents who make space for freedom and love their children fiercely. Blessed are the siblings and relatives who educate, support, and love us as we are. Blessed are the genderqueer youth who are struggling and still persist. Blessed are the 90-year-olds just coming out and those who have been out decades. Blessed are those whose lives were cut too short. May their stories live on through us. Blessed are the survivors. May they keep on living. Blessed are the allies learning to be accomplices. Blessed are those gathered here, witnessing, learning, celebrating. May we all commit to continue showing up, fighting for justice, celebrating all the genders in life. Amen. Seen. Amen for the workers, the 
hungry, the houseless, amen for the lonely and recently spouseless, amen for the queers and their closeted peers, amen for the bullied who hold in their tears, amen for the mothers of little black sons, amen for the kids who grow up scared of guns, amen for the addicts, the shamed and hungover, amen for the calloused, the wise and the sober, amen for the ones who want life to be over, amen for the leaders who lose their composure, and amen for the parents who just lost their baby, amen for the chronically ill and disabled, amen for the children down at the border, amen for the victims of our law and order, I pray that your And I pray that this works As a sword against you and your heart against you and your word I pray that this prayer is a plowshare of sorts an excerpt of Andrea Gibson's say yes when two violins are placed in a room if a chord on one violin is struck, the other violin will sound the note. If this is your definition of hope, this is for you. The ones who know how powerful we are, who know we can sound the music and the people around us simply by playing our own strings. For the ones who sing life into broken wings, open their chests and offer their breath as wind on a still day when nothing seems to be moving. Spare those intent on proving God is dead. For when your fingers are red from clutching your heart so it will beat faster for the time you mastered the art of giving yourself for the sake of someone else for the ones who have felt what it is to crush the lies and lift truth so high the steeples bow to the sky this is for you a few years ago at a meeting, I was asked to introduce myself using my preferred pronouns. I tried not to panic as I tried to remember what exactly a pronoun was. I had a lot of questions as I began my journey toward deconstructing gender. And it all began with being curious. What exactly is a pronoun anyway? If you remember back to grammar school, we learned that a pronoun is a word that takes the place of a noun, like he, she, her, him, they, them, or even it. Jack saw Jill walking toward a hole, and he tried to warn her, but she didn't see it. He stands in for Jack, she stands in for Jill, and it stands in for the hole. That's pronouns. Okay, so how do I introduce myself with my pronouns? And why am I being asked to do that? Well, since you identify as a woman, you would say, my name is Kate, and I use she, her pronouns. It's helpful because it offers up the space for people who are not cisgender to then introduce their pronouns. And it means that you are someone who cares that a space is open to transgender folks. Okay, you're using more terms that are confusing to me. 
I am someone who cares, but I don't exactly know what you're talking about. Can you define some of this stuff for me? Oh, definitely. There are some words and terms that are important for this conversation. I'll give you a little glossary. Cisgender refers to people whose gender identity aligns with their assigned sex at birth. So you, for instance, were assigned female at birth and you identify as a woman now, so you are cisgender. Transgender is a little more complicated because it's sometimes used as an umbrella term to describe anyone whose gender identity differs from their assigned sex. But it can also be used more narrowly to describe someone whose gender identity is opposite of the sex they were assigned at birth. So someone who is assigned female at birth but identifies as a male is transgender. They are a trans man. These words all relate to our gender identity, our deeply held internal sense of ourselves as masculine, feminine, a blend of both, neither, or something else. Gender identity can correspond to or differ from the sex we were assigned at birth. The language a person uses to communicate their gender identity can evolve and shift over time, especially as someone gains access to a broader gender vocabulary. Here's a graphic that might be helpful that shows how transgender is an umbrella term for a lot of things. What's that little umbrella under the big umbrella? What does non-binary mean and all those other words? I think I need to broaden my gender vocabulary. Non-binary means having a gender identity that does not fall exclusively in the categories of male or female. A person who is agender sees themselves as not having a gender or being gender neutral. Gender fluid folks experience gender as something dynamic and changing rather than static. Gender queer is another umbrella term used to describe someone who doesn't identify with conventional gender identities, roles, expression, or expectations. So what pronouns would a gender queer person use? Well, there are a lot of options, but a common one is to use the gender neutral pronouns they and them. But isn't that plural? Don't they refer to multiple people? I'm kind of a stickler for grammar. Using the plural for the singular just doesn't sound right to me. Actually, English speakers have been using the singular they for more than three centuries. Medical texts from the 1600s used they, them pronouns for individuals who didn't fit into binary gender standards. And even we use they, them pronouns all the time to refer to a person whose gender we don't know. The other day, I found someone's wallet. I knew they would be missing it, so I turned it into the police station. There was no ID in the wallet to identify the owner, so I said to the officer at the desk, I hope you can find them. Did you understand that story? Yes. Well, then you know how to use non-binary pronouns. There are some others, though. Oh my goodness, there's so much to take in. I didn't learn any of this in school, and now I'm expected to know a whole new set of terms and ways to use language. Where are you supposed to learn this stuff? Well, you know, church isn't a bad place to start. The church has been at the center of conversations about gendered language for a long time. That hymn we used earlier really plays around with gender norms as a way to get us thinking outside the box about divinity. Strong Mother God, Warm Father God, it's a genderqueer hymn because it disrupts some of our notions about what is female and what is male. Remember when churches only used male pronouns for God? Lots of churches still do. But Unitarian Universalists thought that that was too restrictive and also left out women. So they changed all the words and all the hymns and prayers to use only gender neutral terms for the holy. That way, you didn't have to think of God as a person at all. 
And you definitely didn't have to think of God as an old white man in the sky with a long beard. And church is also a place where we understand the power of language to make someone feel welcome or unwelcome. We often don't even use that word church because it makes some people feel excluded. We talk about the meeting house or the congregation. It's more inclusive to those with a Jewish or a Buddhist background and those who have been really wounded by conservative churches. Language is powerful. I do know that language is powerful, and now I'm really afraid of making a mistake. I'm new at this, and I, I feel like I'm going to get it wrong. Oh, you're definitely going to get it wrong sometimes. I can pretty much guarantee that. The key is to not stop trying. If you misgender someone, like use the wrong pronoun, don't make a huge scene about it. Just try saying the sentence over again with the right pronoun. And honestly, if you're not sure about someone's gender, it's okay to ask. You can say, I use she, her pronouns. What pronouns do you go by? I can really ask that? Okay. Are there some questions I shouldn't ask? I'm glad you asked that one. Yes, there are some questions you shouldn't ask. It's not okay to ask someone about their private parts or what surgeries they've had, that kind of thing. And you shouldn't ask someone what their name used to be. And also, you shouldn't out someone as being transgender. Let them decide what they are comfortable with. And see how I just used they, them pronouns? It gets a lot easier with practice. Don't worry, it will get easier for you too. After all, I am you, just with a little more familiarity with all of this. I don't have a perfect understanding of the gender spectrum, and sometimes it still makes me feel uncomfortable. But you know what I think of when I get uncomfortable? 52% of all transgender and non-binary young people in the US seriously contemplated killing themselves in the year 2020. More than half thought it would be better to be dead rather than trying to live with the rejection, isolation, loneliness, and bullying. The rates of hate crimes and violence against people in this group are staggering, and they're even higher for trans people of color. But the number of suicide attempts was cut in half for trans and non-binary teens who had access to a space where they were respected and their pronouns were honored. So I have to ask myself, whose comfort is more important here? Mine or theirs? Wow, when you put it that way. And there's one more thing. The gender binary and the social constructs of gender have actually been really harmful to all of us. When we're put in boxes, we don't have the freedom to be who we really are, whether we're cisgender or not. I mean, can you think of ways that you've been limited by gender norms yourself? Are there some things you've learned about gender that have limited or harmed you? Oh, so many things, like how assertive women are seen as unlikable, but assertive men are just seen as confident? That's so unfair. That's a great example. And I can give another one. I was talking to Cricket the other day, and she was telling me about being in high school back in the late 1930s. The girls had to take home economics, and the boys got to take shop. So she was stuck making a pink graduation dress while the boys got to make birdhouses using power tools. And all she wanted was to make a birdhouse, but they wouldn't let her. They said girls couldn't use power tools. So after I heard that story, I started asking some other people what they'd been taught about gender that isn't true. We've learned a lot of bad information about gender. Boys can't wear dresses. Men shouldn't show their feelings. Men are more important than women. 
black girls are dumb. Girls are weaker than boys. Guys can't show their feelings. Objectification of women. Boys can't wear makeup. Boys can't wear earrings. Okay, only girls wear skirts. <laughs> Maybe that's true in the United States, but not worldwide. Uh -huh. So, even at a great woman's school, I was taught that women needed to acquire skills so that they could support men. An example of this was in my summer typing class where the teacher insisted that I was bad and reprimanded me for not completing my homework where a young boy in the same situation was told, don't worry son, you'll have a secretary when you grow up. My message that I got that uh, I felt was limiting about gender was that boys can't have long hair. I'm going to put this in the box. And so when I was a kid, I had this long blonde hair and people keep, kept misgendering me. You know, I remember playing softball and they said, well, who's that girl in center field? And I, for some reason that bothered me to be misgendered that way. And so that's my story. Girls and women should be quiet. Fingernail polish is only for girls. I always felt like a male, so my whole life I had to fit in somehow. Now at a late age, I am free from worrying about how other people see me. Dancing is for girls. At 19, I began dancing and wearing leotards and tights were something that only girls did. And as a guy, I had to overcome my own, but also my friend's feelings about me living a life wearing tights. My experience with gender was when I was um, a young, pre-adolescent, my father would often say, your mother wanted a girl, I wanted a boy, and we both got what we wanted. And you know, at the time, I think I felt some shame and humiliation that I wasn't being a girl, but I actually felt some pride that my dad connected with, you know, that, that aspect of me. And I think without having any idea about it, I think they were describing non-binary or the integration of male and female, the aspects of me. So um, I wished it had been able to have been put in a way that was celebrated, not what I took as shaming. So I'm putting that into the box. In my farm family, I learned that there are gender specific roles for girls. My brother was guided through buying a car by raising a crop and selling it. I was told that I should be planning to support myself as either a nurse, a secretary, or a teacher. I learned that I was supposed to be nice and prioritize making things easier for other people in ways that my brother or boys in school weren't. Boys should not and may not do embroidery. So I was, uh, when I was about 11, a young girl who did embroidery uh, showed me what she was doing and I thought it was kind of cool. And so we went to a sewing shop together and I got a hoop and some uh, muslin and colored thread and started doing embroidery on a pattern and I really enjoyed doing it. And my mother saw me doing it and she took it away from me 
and said that boys may not and should not do embroidery. I was very unhappy about that. Only men can be priests. And to me that meant not just that I couldn't be a priest, but that I couldn't have a woman priest. And now I have Reverend Kate Wilkinson. That makes me so mad. I just want to throw out all those horrible lessons we've learned and tear up the gender box they're in. You should do it. It might be liberating. Who cares if girls shouldn't get angry? Get angry. I wonder what could be born if we just dismantled all the boxes we've been put in. Maybe we could all finally be our truest selves we just stopped worrying about everyone else's expectations. I'm going to do it. Uh. Look what happened when I deconstructed the gender box. That's the progress pride flag. It's more inclusive than the old rainbow flag because it represents more people. The black and brown stripes represent communities of color and the pink, light blue and white are the colors of the transgender pride flag. That's awesome. I didn't know about the new flag. Thank you for telling me about it. I've learned a lot today. You're welcome. Thanks for being open to learning. And I'd also like to thank all of the trans and non-binary people who were part of this service today. I hope that you feel seen and heard. And to all of you, thank you for being on this journey with me. Thank mm -hmm. you. Kids are like spinning tops, muddy hands searching under rocks Looking for the magic of newness in the dark Reaching out our limbs in every direction all at once Honesty and imperfection Told my mom when I was three, I'm not a girl or a boy, I'm in between. She did her best to let me be. With short hair and skin knees, her fear was subtle, she hid it well. Her love was strong, but I could tell. Never tell a kid they're wrong for being a new song, one you've never heard. Discover the meaning of a new word Kids know who they are Just listen Listen and rise up out of the box you've been in Ballerina would spin and spin in my white music box Lined with pink, she was pretty, she was thin Play the part, but what did she think when the box went dark? When the voices stop, what's in my heart? I want my skin to feel like mine. I don't want to fear a bathroom line. No, you are not wrong. You're a poem, a new song, one you've never heard. Discover the meaning of a new word. You know who you are, just listen Listen and rise up out of the box you've been in No one is one way or another It's not just for your father, mother, sister, brother I am me, you are you, we know each other We are 
that bright light that is every color. No, you are not wrong. You're a poem, a new song, one you've never heard. Discover the meaning of a new word. You know who you are. Just listen. Listen and rise up out of the box you've been in. Kids are like spinning tops, muddy hands sifting under rocks Looking for the magic of newness in the dark Listen and rise up Kids are like spinning tops, muddy hands sifting under rocks Looking for the magic of newness in the dark Listen and rise up Kids are like spinning tops, muddy hands sifting under rocks Looking for the magic of newness in the dark